In my beginner tutorial series, I showed how you can create lots of expression just using the volume envelope in the instrument editor. But there are many ways to control and play with volume in Milky Tracker, and in the next three tutorials, that's what we're going to talk about, playing with volume. We'll start simple in this tutorial and talk about manually setting the volume. It's simple, but there are lots of fun things you can do with it. So volume has a value between 0 and 64, or 0 and 40, because this is in hex. By default, it's always 40 as seen in the instrument editor here. And we can override this value by manually inputting the value in the green column, this column here. So if I set the default value to zero, we'll have no volume, no sound. If I input 40 in the green column, we'll have sound. And in case it's not clear, you can input 432 one in the left column and you can input you know zero one two three four five six seven eight nine a b c d e f in the right column four zero is the highest so you can't input five or above in the first column and this value will now apply to every row until you change it or once an instrument is called again so if i call the instrument again here we're gonna have sound and then no sound Every time the instrument is called in the blue column, it's going to go and look for the default volume here. And unless it's manually inputted here, that's what it's going to go with. So with a value in the green column, when playback hits this row, let's say this row, volume is immediately adjusted to this value. So on a volume time graph, it would look like this. Row 1, 4, 0, let's say row 2, I don't know, 0, F and then row 320, you get the idea. So for fun, I could start the volume from 40 and decrease it one by every row. What would that look like? So let's try, get my, my hex numbers going here. And then we start at 40 and it goes down to 3F and then 2F. Oh, and we need an instrument here. So it sounds like a smooth linear decrease in volume, but what's actually happening is more like walking down the stairs really quickly because once this row is hit, it's immediately adjusted to that row. Now there's another effect command, CXX, that does the exact same thing. If you want to use the green column for something else, say panning, which we'll talk about later, you can use CXX to input the volume manually. So this will achieve the exact same thing. Let's just, I won't plug in the whole thing, but just to give you an idea. F, E, D, B, C, A, and then all the numbers. And let's get rid of these. Oops. So we don't need this anymore. It's doing the exact same thing. And if CXX and XX are used together and they conflict, Milky Tracker will use CXX. Make it more obvious. Let's move this down to two and then this down to one. Now this is a bit ridiculous, manually inputting the volume like this, when all we're doing really is decreasing the volume by one every row. So we have two other commands for this to make fine volume adjustments, dx and ux. So for example, if we input a d or a u in the first column here, d, u, d, u, d, u, will be increasing or decreasing the volume by that value. So X can equal anything between one and F. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F. So now manually adjusting the volume by one is made much easier because now we only have one value to enter in.
And if we want a quicker decrease in volume, we can just input a different input a different value in the x value. So this is kind of like widening the staircase. Or if we put f here, then we'll probably get to zero much quicker. Now, to make things more confusing, <laughs> there are also effect commands that can also finally adjust volume, and that's EAX and EBX. So if we want to decrease the volume by one, but we want to use the green column, say, for panning, we can use EBX or EB1 in the effect column to achieve the exact same thing. Just plug this in really quickly. Boom, let's get rid of this. And this is doing the same thing. And if you wanted to increase the volume, then you would use EAX. Okay, let's make it a little bit more dramatic so you can hear it. There you go. So this EBB here is achieving the same thing as this, but we're not gonna worry about these extra effects for now. CXX, EAX, EBX can all be accomplished in the green column. And you only really need them when you need the green column for something else like panning. So we're gonna deal with them later. Okay, let's uh, write something. So the goal is to write something using only the volume effects we've learned in this tutorial. Um, as always, uh, starting with creating some sound and creating a sample. So hitting new, uh, let's make this 128 this time, why not? And we want it to be a multiple of 64 if it's going to be in tune. Um, so, and let's use a triangle wave this time. Volume 50% sure. Now because it's 128 samples, it's twice as long, so we want double the number of periods for it to stay in the same octave as to how we would normally have it. There we go. And I don't know. Oh, right. And don't forget to loop it. <laughs> if you're ever wondering why you don't have sound, it might be because you <laughs> forgot to loop it here. And um, let's, uh, I don't know, write on it to make it a little grittier. Okay. And let's, uh, I don't know, start with one note and eventually build up a chord. And what I like to do for fun is like create a string of numbers for volume. Actually, let's make this up higher and let's just start with this. Okay, maybe... Uh... Okay, that's kind of cool. And let's mix it up a little bit like this. And how about F? What does that sound like? Um, maybe something a little bit more interesting. Let's just try and play with it a little bit more. Okay, I don't like how it's always like pulsing on the strong beat. So let's uh, get rid of this one and maybe put that here. And okay, so we've got this kind of string of volume numbers. Okay, now what happens, let's copy and paste this here, except we use a different note. But sometimes what I like to do is I like to take these strings of numbers and offset them by one row. And then why don't we try the same thing with another note, let's say this, and then we'll 
yeah offset it again let's start at a different volume value here okay nice and this is get a little loud so let's uh just decrease the volume a little bit i don't know let's say 70 percent Okay, now let's, uh, we learned uh, FXX in one of the previous tutorials, so let's see if we can make this a little spicier with some different uh, FXX values. So let's start with six. Is that good tempo? Sure. Okay, so let's wiggle my hands around six, seven, and eight. And let's see what happens there. A little bit too dramatic so let's uh, maybe just seven and eight and then here I'll wiggle my fingers kind of around all the other values just to make it a little unpredictable okay nice and then how about, let's see what happens if we can do something a little lower. And let's start this at four zero, but we'll put in a different string, something a little bit more repetitive. So how about like that? That might be too much. Oh, well, that was cool. Okay, how about like a, a group of three instead of groups of four? Okay, and now how about if we change the, the note here? is sounding kind of interesting. Just keep this pattern of three going. Okay, I wonder if we can make it a little bit more interesting with this. Uh, so let's try, we've got four, zero, two, four. What if it was four? One zero. Whoops, I've got add on O oh, two. What was it again? Four zero two four one two. I don't know. Let's try that. Okay, I like that. Okay, cool. Now let's try um, something a little bit different. Let's try a different instrument, something a little softer. Sign, um, yeah, that'll be that'll be okay. And then um, let's do like uh, maybe a higher, even higher chord. Add another channel. Okay, so that's uh, too loud. So we're going to start this at zero. And we're going to gradually fade these in using the UX. And then let's say fade them out like that. Let's see if that makes sense. Maybe a little bit too much. So um, let's uh, try something different. Let's try maybe every 
second row. Whoops. Let's see what that sounds like. Maybe even instead of up, 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 let's move down. Just a different pattern. Okay, cool. So here's a cool thing. I was thinking, I'm thinking of something for this, uh, this channel here. Now, I'm not exactly sure how audio is being routed in the back end, but it seems to me that the envelope in the instrument editor acts as kind of a percentage of the sample volume. So he, here we have the um, instrument one volume editor, and you can see in the top right corner in this box right here, so the green number is the percentage. So this is 100% FF and this is 0% 00, 00. So we can increase and decrease the volume percentage over time. And this works independently from the volume value uh, here in the green column or here, which means we can use both. So let's uh, turn on the volume envelope and we'll make a... Um, a linear decrease over time and let's see what happens oh well first thing we have to make sure is we have the right instrument selected <laughs> okay okay so this is we want to repeat this chord here, here, and here, and same thing here, because we want the volume envelope to be reset. Okay, and now let's add this here. Actually, you know what I want? I want a different bass. I want a different bass sound. I want it to be independent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this sample, range all, hit copy, and then I'm going to move to instrument three and paste it in here. Make sure I loop it. I'm going to close the sample editor and now I'm going to change this to instrument three. Okay, still lots of tweaking to do, but not bad for like 10 minutes. Uh, but hopefully that gives you some ideas of how to start using volume. We're just manually inputting values and finely tuning them. Uh, but there's so much more stuff that you can do with volume, and we're going to continue that in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching. <laughs>